Hello everyone, this video will talk you through Pevensey Bay, which is an example of a coastal management programme in the UK. Now with Pevensey Bay, you need to know the reasons for the management, what management took place there, and the effects and conflicts that resulted because of this. So to recap, Pevensey Bay is located on the coast in East Sussex. That's in the south east of England. Now here, there were lots of reasons why this area needed to be managed. So the first reason is that the beach is being removed rapidly by longshore drift. Longshore drift is that zigzag movement that transports sediment along the coast. So it's leaving some areas particularly vulnerable to erosion as the sediment is being shifted away from there. Now, if we did nothing to protect the land at Pevensey Bay, it's likely that 50 kilometres squared of land would be flooded if it wasn't protected. Now, if that land was flooded, it would potentially affect the triple SI site that's found there. Now, triple SI sites are important because they're home to special species of plants and animals, so they're protected land. So flooding that could threaten the biodiversity there. If we think about how this might impact people for a second, though, it's likely that 10,000 properties could be destroyed if the land is flooded. And this area as well is particularly popular with caravan tourism. So if we were doing nothing here, it could well threaten incomes for local people. So if that's the reasons why Pevensey Bay needs to be managed, let's start thinking about exactly how this area is being managed then. So the four different management techniques you can see on the screen can be sorted into hard and soft engineering. So soft engineering is typically natural. So that would be like the ones that I'm highlighting in yellow. Hard engineering requires a bit more of man-made intervention, typically not as natural as environmentally friendly. So that would be the one that I'm highlighting in blue. So let's talk through and explain these methods then. So the whole purpose and need for beach reprofiling at Pevensey Bay is because during the winter months, material is carried down to the beach by a strong backwash. Now the problem with that is it leaves the upper beach vulnerable to erosion. So with beach reprofiling, bulldo bulldozers are brought in to drag the material back up the beach and create like a gentle sloping profile. With beach replenishment, we've already spoken about the threat that longshore drift poses to the area. So this means that material is constantly being lost. So this material, as part of beach replenishment, is replaced when it's dredged from the seabed and sprayed back onto the beach. So to do this, they use an adapted boat, which can come close to the beach during high tide. So this method mostly takes place during the summer months, and they do it then because there's fewer storms. Storms always remove a lot of sediment from the beach. So it'd almost be like doing it twice. So you might as well wait for the summer. Beach recycling again aims to help with the effects of longshore drift. We know that longshore drift at Pevensey Bay acts as a conveyor belt. Materials always be moved from west to the east side of the beach. Now the problem with that is that the western end of the beach is becoming depleted. It's not got a lot of sediment there. So with beach recycling, three times a year, trucks are brought in to move the material that's accumulated on the eastern side of the beach back to the western side. Now they're doing this to ensure that the beach has an even profile. If the beach has got an even profile, it protects that western side that may well have been left a bit exposed because the sediment was removed. And last but not least then, groins. Now, wooden groins have been placed at equal intervals along the coast. And these again have been put in to trap sediment that's been moved as part of longshore drift. We know that material as part of longshore drift is being pushed and travelling in that zigzag movement to the eastern side. So by using the groins and trapping the sediment, it prevents some areas of the coastline then being overly exposed to erosion. So if we've got all of these management techniques in place, 
we want to think about, well, are there any effects that have happened because of a result of this? So we can break down these effects. So positively, we could say, well, they're quite pleasing, especially the soft engineering for residents and tourists. So it looks good. So that would be a positive. Remember, if it looks good for tourists, people are more likely to go there on holiday. The soft engineering is also cheaper than the hard engineering to implement. So it could be argued that it's saving money whilst looking good and still attracting the tourists. However, the big negative here is that it requires, with soft engineering, a high level of maintenance. You've constantly got to be checking it and improving it, should it not be right. Oh, I've spelt maintenance wrong there. A bit tired today. There we go. So if we keep going on from here then, we can look at the conflicts. So we could say, well, one big conflict here is the fact that the residents wanted a seawall to be built at Normans Bay. We could say, well, does the opinion of the residents matter that much? Well, their opinion was backed up by the Environment Agency, who also believed that a seawall would offer the correct amount of protection for the SSSI site. So both of those viewpoints were sort of rejected, if you like, by the council, who thought that the soft engineering would be far more effective and far more appealing to the tourists. However, one thing that's important to note is just how much money has been spent so far on all of this management, and that's £75 million. So in the exam, you would need to weigh up exactly how effective you think these different techniques have been at managing Pevensey Bay. I hope you found this video helpful.